In today's video I will use my vacuum chamber to coat glass in different metals and also to coat 3D prints. This is my vacuum chamber. Currently I'm able to achieve pressures of about 10 to the power of minus 6 millibars and because I know it's hard to imagine those numbers sometimes, it's less than 100 millionth the atmospheric pressure. Up until this point I haven't used my vacuum chamber for anything useful, well it highly depends on your definition of useful, but in today's video I will use it for something called PVD or physical vapor deposition. PVD basically describes the process where you take a material, turn it into the gas phase and then deposit it onto a surface. In my case this material will be a metal like aluminum, copper or silver. There are different methods to get your material into the gas phase, for example electron beam evaporation, sputtering, but what I'm going to use is thermal evaporation, which is, I would say, the easiest way. It just means that you heat the metal in the vacuum chamber until it evaporates or sublimates and then you can condense it onto your surface. Some of you might ask themselves why would you want to do that and my response to that would be Where are your silver plated safety glasses? I actually can't see anything through there. <laughs> First I would say we talk about how I'm going to heat the metal in my vacuum chamber because one thing is for certain, I'm not going to get a torch in there. To heat the metal in my vacuum chamber I will be using electricity or to be more precise resistive heating. This is a crucible, it is just a strip of molybdenum metal with an indentation in the middle and you can place the metal you want to evaporate in here and then pass a lot of current through this metal strip here to heat it up and evaporate the metal. These crucibles come in different shapes and sizes and also materials. This here is a tungsten crucible, but what all of these crucibles have in common is that the boiling point and the melting point of course needs to be very high. That's why tungsten and molybdenum are two of the most common metals used. To test this evaporation process I will be using silver and copper. And I really want to thank a member of the AGS in Braunschweig. From his personal supply he sent me these crucibles and also the material samples so I could use them in my experiments. It's all well and good to know that we can use electricity to heat our crucible. The problem is how do you get electricity into your metal vacuum chamber? For this case electrical vacuum feed-throughs are used. You can then just use an o-ring or in case of a CF flange a copper seal and attach it to your vacuum chamber. The problem with this type of feed through is that there's no way I'm going to get enough current through there to heat the crucible. For that high amperage feed throughs are used. They can be bought but they are pretty expensive and I think it would be boring to just buy one. So this is a version I made, it is just a 20mm copper rod which has been glued using JB Weld into this KF25 flange. I tested it using my helium leak detector and it is actually vacuum tight. The problem is it is only one conductor, which means I would have to use the housing of my vacuum chamber as the other conductor. I then remembered watching a video of Fugens Optics, I'm not sure how to pronounce his channel name, I'm sorry for that, but if you're interested in thermal evaporation and especially optics, you should really check out his channel, you can find it in the video description. In his video he used a design with three conductors to be able to evaporate two different metals and that's why I made this version too, which consists of a K40 flange and these three conductors. These here are not actually copper rods, they are 16mm copper tubes with a 4mm wall thickness and I just used solid copper rods, inserted them in this end here about 2cm I think and braced them on. I then drilled holes in each of them, tapped them and this way I will be able to attach something on there in my vacuum chamber. These holes here would mean that I have a virtual leak. There can be air trapped inside which would slowly diffuse out of there and ruin my vacuum. That's why all of these conductors here have holes drilled in them on the side which enables the air which is in this hole to get out. I then again used epoxy to seal those conductors to the KF40 flange. In this case you can see that the epoxy is white, I didn't use JB Weld, I used EA1C which is a specialized high vacuum epoxy which basically just means that the outgassing from this epoxy is very low. I also tested this feed through on my helium leak detector and it showed no leaks. You may ask yourself why I'm using a copper tube instead of rods. The reason is that I want to water cool the setup. These T-pieces here enable me to use a brass rod which reaches almost all the way to the top here and these hose fittings here and if I would let water flow in from the bottom it would basically just trickle down the side of the copper tube but if water flows in from the side it fills the whole copper tube before it can exit through this brass tube here. I thought this would be the simplest way to 
water cool this system. These copper pieces here can be screwed to the feed through in a way you see on the table right now and then I can just mount the crucibles to the top. This enables me to use two crucibles by just connecting either these two parts or these two parts. I made these parts from copper square stock but as you can see the parts are definitely not pretty and just when I broke my second drill bit in this copper piece here I got a message from today's sponsor PCBWay. As the name suggests, PCBWay is the perfect partner if you need circuit boards manufactured and assembled. However, that's not all they excel at. PCBWay also offers a diverse range of services, including 3D printing in various materials, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and most intriguingly for me, CNC machining. All you need to do is upload the file of the desired part on their website, choose from a wide selection of materials like aluminum, stainless steel, brass, copper, titanium and more, and you will receive an immediate estimate of the costs for the final product. I recently put their CNC service to the test and had these parts made from copper. Don't they look wonderful? These are essentially the same parts I previously handmade, just beautifully crafted this time. Additionally, I put their sheet metal fabrication service to the test and had these parts made from stainless steel. What they are meant for, you will discover later on. So, if you're considering having parts made, do check out PCBWay. And now back to the video. In order to produce the high current needed for the thermal evaporation, I will be using a microwave oven transformer. With its original secondary coil, it produces about 2000 volts. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with microwave oven transformers. In my case, I removed the original secondary coil and I will replace it with one to three loops of this heavy gauge wire. This enables me to get an output of a few volts at a high amperage. I would say let's install the whole assembly and see if everything works. Moment of truth! Let's crank it up some more. Beautiful. That's just perfect. Okay, great. Now, there's only one problem left before we can start coating things in metal. And that is that if I would just start evaporating metal in my chamber, I wouldn't only coat the glass surface, I would basically coat everything in line of sight of the metal, which means I would coat my vacuum chamber. And I want to try to keep it pristine as long as possible. And that's what these parts here are for. This design here is basically also a ripoff of the design made by the member of the AGS. He designed it large enough to fit the whole chamber and I just changed the dimensions and a few details. It is meant to protect my chamber from the metal vapors. And in order for you to be able to see what is happening in there, I use glass plates which can be inserted into these slots. This way the chamber walls are not in the line of sight of the evaporating metal. It will instead deposit onto the glass plates. All of the parts and screws have been cleaned with acetone and isopropyl alcohol to remove any dirt or oil. And all of the parts with internal threads have vent holes drilled into the side of them. Since I bought a larger piece of glass, I will just use a glass cutter to cut it up into smaller pieces. This video will not go into detail about cleaning the glass surface. I will just clean the glass with acetone, isopropyl alcohol and then distilled water. Once I know that everything works, there will be another video about a better cleaning process. Since I have no idea how much metal I will actually need for this process, I will just add what's called in German eine Prise, or in English a pinch. And the glass slide is just suspended by two copper wires. We are almost at 10 to the power of minus 6 millibars and I think it's time to test evaporating metals in a vacuum chamber for the first time. I have everything connected down here, as you can see. The water cooling is not connected because in a previous test without any metal inside the crucible, it turned out that the copper rods do not get hot at all. I have my V-Round microwave oven transformer connected and the transformer itself is connected to the variac down here so I can control the power. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what we have inside. Oh, 
That looks quite nice. Okay, the surface is of course far from perfect. You can see some dirt on there, which is basically just because I didn't clean the glass properly. The person that sent me all of the crucibles and also the metal samples also made this for me. I think it's awesome. He just used a stencil to cover the areas he didn't want to coat and he did not use thermal evaporation, he used sputtering. But I will try to recreate this uh, using my thermal evaporation setup. That wasn't as easy as I would have hoped. It was quite challenging to get all the small letters out of there without lifting the corners. And when scraping it, uh, sometimes glue residue was left on the glass. Because I do not want the marks from the wire on this glass plate, I will use a small piece of double-sided tape. I know that it's probably not good for the vacuum, but I don't know any other way to do this. In the future I will probably build a clamp which holds the glass slides only on the sides. I'm very interested to see if the vinyl can withstand the radiative heat from the thermal evaporation. Looks like the vinyl survived. And well, looks like my construction to protect the chamber didn't work perfectly. I think the reason is that I just assumed the metal source would be in the middle and well, it's not, and that's why there are gaps in line of sight with the evaporating metal. I have replaced the crucible with a new one, and now I'm going to put some copper in there and try to deposit some copper onto the glass pieces. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? I just noticed something. Doesn't that look cool? It's basically pure silver on one side and copper on the other side. It just flakes off my, in quotation marks, protective glass panels. You definitely don't want this to get in your turbo molecular pump. There is a lot of room for improvement, but overall I'm very satisfied with the results. The metal adheres to the glass surface properly. As you can see, I can't remove it by rubbing it with my fingers. But of course, by using a sharp tool, I am able to damage the surface. The attempt to make my channel name out of pure silver wasn't that successful. When peeling off the stencil, I also removed some of the deposited metal. Just as with the copper piece, the metal that did stay on the surface won't come off easily. I also made these absolutely useless safety glasses by coating them with silver. I think by controlling the layer thickness of the metal it should be possible to make them somewhat transparent. So in the future I may work on a piezoelectric sensor to determine the layer thickness. And I'm also thinking about adding a shutter between the metal source and the glass. This way all of the contaminants and dirt that will evaporate at the beginning of the process will be deposited on the shutter and not on my glass pieces. But I think the most important part is cleaning the glass surface properly. Which means I will work on a process to clean the glass slides with sodium hydroxide and then plasma clean them in my vacuum chamber. And I will also test different metals like chromium, aluminum or nickel. I have also tried to coat some 3D printed parts in silver and they are actually conductive. The pump down time was of course a lot longer since the plastic outgasses quite a lot. There is a lot to improve and find out here but I think that will be a topic for a future video. I again want to thank the member of the AGS for sending me his personal materials so I could use them in my experiments. AGS is a hackerspace in Braunschweig that also works with vacuum systems. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you should definitely check them out. You can find a link in the video description. If you like my projects and my videos, consider joining me on Patreon to support my work. And I really want to thank my current supporters on Patreon. I really hope you liked today's video. Thank you a lot for watching.